Halloween everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the design that I have personally been referring to as my pumpkin potato because it is a kind of an idea or based off the idea of a potato head. You know the classic kids toy where there's different eyes, nose, mouth, ears that you can take on and put off and switch up the face? That is what we're doing, but we have different pumpkin facial features to do. So I have two sets of eyes, two noses, and two mouths that you can interchange. I think it is so cute. It is just such a cute little concept that you can switch out if you look scary or happy and you could make as many different facial features as you would like to switch around if you want to have more fun with it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. We are going to start with a gorgeous overlay of a glittery black acrylic which I, you may have seen me recently use in another video. I used it in my spilled potion bottle video that I just uploaded and I couldn't get enough of it so we're using it again. And then I'm going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic, same rules apply, a nice smooth overlay with the glitter, and then a thin clear acrylic overlay over the top. It's so pretty. I love that color so much. And then I'm going to file it into shape with my e-file just to go over it to make sure it's nice and smooth. I essentially use that color anytime I had a design that I felt it wouldn't be too distracting for. I was like, yep, I'm grabbing that glitter because it's just so pretty. Then I'm going to take an orange acrylic that's actually called Jack Lantern. It's from Double Dip and it is perfectly named and I'm going to be using that to just make a nice large oval on the nail that will be for the base of my Jack Lantern and I'm going to not sculpt in the little ridges of the pumpkin yet. I'm just going to leave it the oval and then after I have that nice base sculpted nice flat across the nail I'm going to press my magnets in where I'm going to have the eyes the nose and the mouth for the pumpkin. So we've got the two for the eyes and then nose, mouth right on top of each other. Add a little bit more of your jack-o'-lantern color over the top to smooth out the transition from the or from the base of the pumpkin over the magnets. Do not completely cover them at this point. Just add a little, little lip over them. So the magnets should still stick up out of the acrylic. Then I'm going to carve the shape or sculpt the shape of the ridges of the pumpkin that are behind the stem. And then after that, you can add the shape of the pumpkin that is in front of the stem. I'm going to add that first middle ridge that's going to go over, over the magnets that are for the nose and for the mouth. Add a nice smooth area, a nice wide pumpkin, pumpkin bump. And then after you have that one done, you're going to sculpt the ones to the left and to the right. This is where you're going to cover up the eye magnets. And then just leave the little indent between the two sections. So make sure that you don't allow that to fill in. Apply that all the way down. Hopefully your acrylic sculpts nice and smooth and you can get these really gorgeous areas of the pumpkin with minimal effort. If your acrylic seems to be a little bit, a little bit feisty, you may need to go through and add a couple different layers just to blend them out or possibly take an e-file or something and blend them or buff them or file them. If it doesn't seem like you can get a nice smooth overlay of this of this pumpkin orange on all, all your pumpkin sections. If it just seems like it's not working so well, just know that there's other options out there. Then I'm going to fill in the last section that will kind of be the transition from the front of the pumpkin to the back of the pumpkin on the sides. Same thing, make sure that you leave all the little grooves in there so that so that they don't, don't fill in. Add another layer to that side, connect it all the way down as well as smoothing it out right at the top. And then go through and do the same on the other side for the last one. As I'm sculpting all of these, I'm kind of going back and forth and looking at a picture of a pumpkin just to try to get the shapes in the right places. Now using a brighter shade of orange, I'm going to be using that to add a highlight to each of my sections of the pumpkin. This color does not blend out as well as far as the pigment goes. It's a little bit splotchy, which is okay. I'm actually going to kind of play into that and allow it to do that. Give me some, some fun little textures on my pumpkin but basically you just want to add a little bit of brightness all over. If you do not want to do this with acrylic and you'd rather do this with a paint product, you certainly could. I am not using any kind of a paint on the main part of my pumpkin and then I won't have to apply any top coat to it. I love the finish of just a un, un top coated, unfiled, unbuffed acrylic. And so I'm going to leave that as the, the finish of my pumpkin without applying anything else. So knowing that I don't want to use any paint on top of this pumpkin, I'm going to do all of that detailing with acrylic. Once that's done, I'm going to take some green and I'm going to be sculpting the stem of my pumpkin. So I'm going to place that right behind the front bump and then pull that up. It will partially cover some of the details that you sculpted behind that, but that's okay. You know, it's one of those things where you have to put those in because you don't know exactly what this pumpkin stump is going to cover. So if you're like, oh man, I added all that highlighting and all those details and then I'm just going to go and cover them up. Still worth it. Still make sure that you do that. 
I'm going to add a little indent in the very top of the pumpkin stump where it would have been cut or ripped off of the vine. Smooth that out again. And then after you are happy with your pumpkin in general, set it to the side to make sure that it cures completely. You don't want any extra moisture or any extra pliability in your pumpkin before we start the next stage. So make sure that you can click it and it'll make that nice little tap, tap, tap sound before you proceed. Then we're going to wrap it with some aluminum foil going all the way around, taking something like if you have an almond shaped fingernail as I do, you can just use the tip of your nail to kind of press the foil into all of the grooves on your pumpkin. Don't use anything sharp, make sure it's a rounded edge. Something else to use would be a silicone tool. And I'm going to place five or four magnets on top of the four that are in the nail. So one on top of each eye, on top of the nose, on top of the mouth. And then with black acrylic, sculpt the shape of the carvings. Unlike a jack-o'-lantern, as you would normally see one, the facial features are going to be 3D on top of the pumpkin versus having them be indented or carved into the pumpkin. Unfortunately, as try as I might, I couldn't figure out a good way to make it so that it would be the other way. The best I could come up with would be to sculpt the outside of the pumpkin, then fill it in with black, and then have the magnetic pieces be the entire front of the pumpkin that you would set on top. However, if you didn't have that piece on there, it would look really weird. And I wanted my pumpkin to look good with or without the face so that if you wanted to just be a pumpkin you would have that option too if you didn't want any of the magnetic pieces on top of it but that would be another way to do it and maybe that'll be something that i will have to try and show you next year as kind of a different version of this but for our our pumpkin faces i'm going to do the first one is a happy face so i'm going to sculpt a nice rounded eye with a little round in cut on the middle on the bottom and then a very simple triangular nose something that's not too crazy. And then for the mouth, I'm going to also keep it kind of on the simple side. The one thing to keep in mind when you're sculpting your mouth is that you have to make it so that the magnet is covered with acrylic. So where you place the teeth of your pumpkin, you just have to be aware that that magnet is kind of in the way. So start by covering the magnet and then work around it that way. But for my happy pumpkin, I'm going to give him the blocky squared teeth, what I would consider to be a classic jack-o'-lantern smile. And it's really easy with this particular smile to cover up the magnet where the magnet does not get in the way. So that would be kind of a good starting point if you are starting out your pumpkin face sculpting career. And then I'm going to continue that up into a nice easy smile. We want this one to be very jovial, very happy. It is somewhat hard to tell in the video because black acrylic doesn't show up as a whole lot as far as the different highs and lows of the acrylic. But there is a definite bump by where the magnets are, you can tell that there's something thicker there. So after you have the shape sculpted in for your eyes, for your nose, for your mouth, go through with more black acrylic and try to blend that out. Add another layer to it so that there isn't that defined lump on top of on top of the magnet. Once that's done and it's all cured, you can remove the foil and then carefully peel the foil away from the back of the pieces. The noses and the eyes will come off easily. You have to be a little bit careful with the mouth so that you don't crack it because it is long and it is thin. After that, rewrap your pumpkin with foil, add another set of magnets, and then sculpt your next face. You can make as many faces as you want, but I would highly recommend if you're going to do at least two that you have one that is happy and one that is more of like that creepy look. So for the creepy pumpkin, we're going to have eyes that are triangular with really narrow points towards the middle. Another thing that you could do if you wanted to is you wouldn't necessarily have to have every pumpkin face have a nose. When I was looking at my different jack-o'-lantern facial designs, I noticed that it was about a 50-50 shot with the creepy ones especially, whether or not they had a nose. And I thought, well, you know, you wouldn't have to have a nose. You could sculpt just eyes and more mouths because the noses don't have as much variety. So if you wanted to make more faces but didn't necessarily want to have as much work, you could do a certain feature that you wanted to have more, more choices with. Or you could just make, you know, another set of eyes or another, another mouth if you wanted to, if you needed a little more variety but didn't need to do an entirely new face. For this one's mouth, I'm going to give it a zigzag, kind of pointy teeth look. Same thing, start in the middle, cover the magnet first to make sure that that does not get missed or doesn't end up in the wrong spot. Add the creepy teeth going all the way up with a much more intense point on the ends. Once you're done with that, there's a little bit of detailing that you may want to do on the pumpkin stump. 
but the rest of the pumpkin is good to go. And then you just need to apply a layer of gel sealer, sealer over the background to make that gorgeous glitter shine. If you watch my other video, the potion bottle video that I left matte and it's also beautiful, but for this one, it needs to be shiny matte top coat over the pumpkin stump. And then you get to play with your jack-o'-lantern. I absolutely love how you can see the different facial features. And if you had different varieties, you could mix them up and have happy eyes and creepy mouth or just different styles. You could also do the kind of mouth where it's just kind of an open circle and he's like, oh, so many different choices. I hope you guys like this and have fun with it. If you like the Mr. Potato Head style, I do have a potato head that I did a few years ago and I'll put a link to that one in the description box below and I'll see you all next time. Bye.